Welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at the text tool in GIMP and learn how to create and modify text within GIMP. Go ahead and locate your text tool. It's going to be maybe the letter A icon um, with this icon set. If we hover over, we can see the shortcut key to get into this is T, T for text. So if we're in the move tool, for example, we can hit the T key on our keyboard to quickly get into this tool. And also once we're in the tool, we see some different options for it. Right down here, we see what type of font it is. This is a serif font. The size currently is 60, and the color is black, and there's some different options here as well. So that means when we go to create this, if we just left click in here, it creates these four boxes. This is our sort of our dynamic text box, and we can just start typing in right now. We type our text, and sure enough, it's the color is black. It's using the serif font, and the size is 60. Now, if we want to change it, um, or change any part of it, we can select, maybe if we want this is to be larger, we just left click and hold to select those two letters. And then we can change the size up here by going plus and minus. And so we can make just those larger. If we want just a certain letter to be much larger, we select that letter by left clicking and dragging till it has a box around it. And then we can use plus and minus up here to change. We don't use the plus and minus over here because that's going to change the entire selection, or it's going to change the attributes for the next text box that we create. So whatever's selected is going to be what's changed up here. Uh, we can also double click and just type in a value. So 150, we can make a giant S there. Um, notice, so something you're, you don't want to pay attention to is if you bring in an image, and I have one loaded in here. Actually, before we do this, I want to call your attention to the layers. When we created this, we've created a text layer on top of our white background, which means if we ever want to, we can get back in here and edit it. Say we're using the move tool, uh, or maybe we select something. We want to get back in and edit this text. All we have to do is click on the text tool and then click in here, and we can erase and start typing in something else if we wanted to. We can also resize the text box by dragging these handles over here. And if we want to move it around, we could use the move tool, but you can also hold down the alt key on your keyboard and just click somewhere within the text box and drag. This moves the entire text box. And again, to resize the text box, you can hover to the top or the sides. And notice if you do resize it, since this is a, a dynamic text box, it will kind of push the, the text to the next uh, portion of the box. That makes sense. It won't run off the side, but it will run off the tops and the bottoms. Okay, I'm going to go to this image here because this is a quite a large image. We can see it's like 5,000 pixels by 3,500 pixels, and it's 300 DPI. So if we grab the same text tool with the same settings, the 60 uh, size, and we click and we start typing in that same thing, notice it's much, much smaller. It appears to be smaller, and that's because... Uh, the image is so much larger. So relative to this image size, the text appears to be small, but it is still the same size as it was over here, at least before we started messing with it. So to change the size, again, we can come over here and just change the size of the text. We can click in here and type in 150 and get some larger text. We might also want to change the color. If I move this over top of the green leaf by holding down the Alt key and I drag it on top of the leaf, now it's hard to see that, so we might want a lighter color text. We can click over here and change the color. We can change it to something maybe like a light blue, and then we go OK. Now that stands out a little bit better. Again, the color change is happening here in the text options and not the color selector here where we would change it for our brush. So make sure you pay attention to that. Um, let, we can bring in some text, so maybe I'll come back here. Well, I can do it right here. If we want to draw a text box, another thing we can do is create a new text box by left-clicking and holding and dragging that down. Then we can create a specific area to keep our text within. And I have a on my desktop a file, just a text file, uh, of some sample text. It looks like this. Just sample, is this Latin, I believe? Satin, uh, satin? <laughs> sample Latin text. And I could copy it. I could just highlight it all and right click and go copy and then bring it in here, right click and go paste to get that text in here. But I'm going to go control Z. Oh, does that let us, oh, oops, right here, control Z. Because something we could also do is when we have our text box created, I can right click 
and I can go open text file. And that lets me choose a text file on my computer that already has text in it, and it will bring it in. Uh, text cannot be rendered, it is likely too big. Please make sure, uh, please make it shorter or use a smaller font. So this is just a notice saying it's running off the edge. But what I could do, uh, I wonder if it brought it all in, if I resize this. So there's more text under here that I can access by just resizing this box to display all of the text. So that's a nice warning that it gave me that I was cutting off some of the text. Uh, I'm moving this by holding down the Alt key. I've mentioned that a few times, but we could also grab the Move tool and it moves just like we would expect any other layer. So here we have three layers. We have this blue text, this black, black text, and then also the actual image. So I can set this to Move Active Layer and make sure I'm selected on the layer I want to move. And I can just left click and move this without having to press the Alt key. Uh, I want to show something here. We can dis turn off just like we would any layer. We can turn off and view this without uh, one of the layers. Um, so we could also, I'll move this out of the way because I want to show something we can do. If we want to edit something in here, we get back into the text tool to do an edit. It's not the selection tool. If we try to select the text, it's going to select the pixels of that text on that text layer. Um, but if we want to get in and edit this, we can select it. Maybe I'll just go to select all. We can select it with, or click inside of it is what I mean to say, with the text tool uh, active. And then we can make changes. So under here, there's this justification. So if we want all this text to be centered, we can click here to center all the text. We can put it in sort of a paragraph uh, format with the edges aligned. So the edges, all the text runs to the edges and it creates some spacing to create sort of a more of a block of text. Uh, we can do right justified or left justified. We could indent this first word by, we can hover over and read what these are, but the, this top one is the indent and we can indent that first word by making this a little bit larger or we can type in a quite a large value and see how that indents it. Again, it's gonna be different depending on what size image you're using. So 800 pixels is usually quite a large indentation, but since this is a large image, it doesn't really, uh, that's a little bit dramatic anyway. The next one here, this is the line spacing and the font spacing or the letter spacing. So this is what you do, like remember when you're in school and you had to write a, an essay and you had to have like five pages, you'd like stretch the, the spacing between the lines. Well, that's exactly what this tool here does. And if you really want to get creative, you could adjust the spacing between letters. Anyway, that's what this lets you do. Very, very useful um, if you're working with text and you want to kind of give it that added dimension uh, and fill in certain areas. Um, yeah, that's about all we're going to use. There's this there's uh, this uh, editor here. You can go use editor. You can adjust the text in here as well and edit it, and it will edit it on here. And you can do some of these same tools, but it's sort of redundant because you can change it you can just come in and change it in real time on here, but just know there is an editor if you prefer to work that way. To change the font, well, we can select or we can we can change the font over here. This will just change all of our font. So we click, and there's ways you can choose uh, the way that this font, the way the fonts are being displayed. So you can come over here and look at it in a grid instead. Uh, we can create it larger so we can get a better uh, view of what these fonts look like. And there's even a breakout. If you do this last one, it's kind of nice if you're working with fonts a lot. You can add over here so that the font selection comes over here on this side instead. So just like we had our layers was the, the one we were looking at before, now we have a new window, a new font uh, dialog or toolbox just for selecting fonts and browsing through fonts that are installed on our system. And that's exactly what these are, just fonts installed on the system, not special fonts that come with GIMP necessarily. So if a font's installed in your system, it should be able to get pulled in and appear in this list. Um, okay, this is the last thing I was gonna show you. If we grab the brush tool, uh, let's go back to our layers over here and let's draw. If we grab the, uh, let's grab a brush and it's just black right now, we want to draw. Well, first of all, we can't draw over here. Nothing is happening because we're on this text layer and notice this layer has a little A on it showing us that this is a text layer, which is what lets us be able to get in here and make changes to it after the fact. We can draw on this. So if I wanted to do some drawing on top of these letters, I can do that. But that changed this now to, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a different layer. It's not a text layer anymore, which means if I want to come back to the text tool to make an edit, 
and click in here, it's going to bring up this dialog that says the layer selected is a text layer, but has not been modified using other, or has been modified using other tools. So we can either create a new layer to edit on top of this, or we can edit it. But if we do, we're going to lose, where does it say it? Basically, it'll discard, yeah, discard all the modifications we've made. So if I go to edit, that's gone now. I can edit the text, but all the drawing I did on top of there is gone. So it's a good idea. It's a, I recommend just keeping your text layers as text. And then if you want to draw something, go ahead and add in a new layer and draw on top of that new layer. Uh, you can make it a, a transparent layer. Whoops. But uh, that's what I would recommend doing uh, instead of trying to draw within your text layers. Hopefully you found this video informative. I kind of ran through that quickly, but we are going to um, touch on more advanced options for making text look pretty. You can do um, text to path and you can do some pretty cool things, adding texture and dimension and 3D text and all kinds of stuff like that. But I'm going to end this video here. Uh, go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and we'll catch you in the next video.